This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can make your own beautiful website or online store with this all-in-one platform. Hi everyone, this video I'm drawing animals based on your requests. A while ago on Instagram I posted a story and I was like, what animal should I draw? And then a few days later I went back and looked at them and I grabbed some uh, suggestions that caught my eye. And I started off with something um, easier, I guess, which is a bunny, but specifically a Holland Lop bunny. And they're really, really cute. Uh, my friend requested this one and I know she has a lot of pet bunnies. So I was like, I want to draw a bunny and I want to draw like, like a specific type of bunny. Cause I don't really know like what the different bunnies are called. Like I'm, I'm sure there's different breeds of bunnies. So this is the one that I chose to begin with. And all the other animals, I tried to pick animals that I don't normally draw or that I've never heard of or that I've just like never drawn before. I tried to do some like unconventional animals. So if you want to see what it looks like when I draw other animals that like are not my typical animals, like, you know, frogs and like fuzzy creatures, there's some other ones here that were a lot of fun to draw. So I hope you enjoy. And I'll also put up whoever requested it on the screen for each one. Some animals were requested multiple times um, and I might have not caught every single one, but I put up the ones that I happened to see. So I started off with sketching it in a brown pencil and then I did watercolor on top. And while I let the watercolor dry, I'll move on to the next one. So the second one that I drew is a chameleon. And of course I know what a chameleon is, but I don't think I've drawn them before and the first one I drew was okay. I feel like in the second one its face had a little bit more expression to it and it definitely went a lot better than the first one because the first one I was like kind of feeling it out, kind of like figuring out how the chameleon should be drawn and whenever I'm drawing a new animal I tend to stick to the reference photo a little bit more when I'm first trying it out but then when the next drawings like when you start drawing more of them it's easier to sort of put your own like natural way of drawing into it in your like own style and like you just get more comfortable and you're able to draw it the way that you um would like normally draw stuff if that makes sense so the first one's a little bit more stiff like the face isn't exactly how I wanted but the second one I actually really like how he looks I like his silly expression and the way I drew the limbs and just like the overall feel of it I liked a lot and I think I should draw more chameleons because it was a lot of fun I really like how they have like huge eyes and I like how their tails curl up at the end um, they're like coiled around itself, which I think is really cool. And I always like to make sure when I'm doing watercolor to like mix multiple colors into it as I go. So like if I'm doing a chameleon and I'm doing like a green chameleon, I won't just pick one green and paint the whole thing the same color. I'll like make sure to drop in other greens and like vary the hue as I go. So like some areas are more turquoise and some are more green. And I get a lot of questions about the type of brush pen that I use. And I just showed it on screen there. It's like the Tombow brush pens. They usually come in a two pack of like a stiff brush and a more soft brush. And I like them both the same. Like I don't really notice much of a difference between them. Uh, definitely when you first open the packet, there will be a difference. But as you like use a stiffer brush more and more, I think it gets softer. So if you want a nice like waterproof brush pen, I would recommend these. They're not that expensive. They're pretty easy to find on like Amazon and like local art stores and stuff like that. Um, so after the watercolor dried on each of the sketches, I would just go in with the brush pen and define the lines. At first, the bunnies weren't really like turning out how I wanted, especially the first one. It just kind of looked like a ball of fluff and it didn't really look like it was an actual animal like it didn't have much shape to it but that's kind of what the photo looked like so I don't know I feel like when I'm drawing like super fluffy animals they can actually be the hardest to draw if you can't see enough of their anatomy like if you can't really tell what's happening and all you can see is fur it's really hard to like translate that to an illustration because in the photo there's like a lot of subtleties that that makes it easy for you to be able to tell like what the animal is and like where its back leg is and stuff like that but when you illustrate it, you're simplifying it a lot. And like if the photo's already so hard to tell what's going on, it's like hard to read it and then translate that to your 
drawing, if that makes any sense. So the second photo, I wanted to make sure that I picked one that I could like see all of its feet and like draw it a little bit better. But I definitely made the neck too short, like the head. Like it looks like like a squashed bunny, but it's it's kind of cute like that, I guess. Adding line work for the chameleons was a lot of fun. I really like doing like wrinkles in the skin because I feel like I don't know if they are reptiles or amphibians. I'm assuming they are reptiles, but I'm gonna have to fact check that. Um, but it's fun to like add little wrinkles where their like legs bend because their skin is more like scaly and will like fold on itself. Um, that's kind of how I like to show the different like textures in the animals. So like bunnies are fuzzy, so you do lots of like almost like triangular marks or hatching, and then the chameleons have um, more scales, so you can add like little scale dots. I don't know if they actually have scales or skin or what exactly it is, but like the texture of their skin is obviously not fur. So it's like nice to add little wrinkles in places and little bumps and like ridges and stuff like that. Um, it was definitely a lot of fun I drawing chameleons. I really liked the way the second one looked. Like I, I almost want to do like a chameleon print or sticker or something, but I'm not sure if there's a lot of people out there that are big fans of chameleons. I know that like I don't think people dislike them, but I don't know if they have as strong of a fan base as like frogs and like raccoons and stuff like that. Um, but if you're a chameleon appreciator and you'd want to see a sticker, let me know. Now for a break to thank this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. If you've been wanting to make a website for your business or for your portfolio or whatever your needs may be, Squarespace could be a good option for you. They have so many templates to choose from and this gives you a really good starting off point for your website. It can be hard to go in from scratch and know exactly how you want to set up your site. So I would definitely recommend browsing through the templates and choosing one that resonates with you. And once you've selected it, you can actually change a lot of different things about it. You can like change the font that's used on the whole site, color scheme for the whole site. You can add a lot of stuff and it's really customizable. So your final site can end up looking totally different from the template. Also make sure to link all your social media to your site. Squarespace makes it really easy to do this. And if you're an artist like me, they have a portfolio and galleries feature that lets you display your work really easily and cleanly. If this sounds interesting to you, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash gelarts and you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Something that can add a lot of interest to a sketchbook page is coloring in the background of your sketches and you can use whatever media you want for this. Um, I think I chose pencil crayon for this page and I just like colored in behind a lot of the animals and it just kind of made them stand out. And I usually like to not do too many different colors on one page, but there's really no right or wrong way. Um, but for this one, I think I limited it to like green and pink and yellow for some reason. That's just what I wanted to go with. And I didn't outline, like I didn't put a green background behind the chameleons because they're already green. So it's nice to pick a color that will like complement it or contrast with it. So like one of them is pink because the chameleon's green, pink and green tend to go well together. And the other one has a yellow background because the chameleon's eye is yellow. And I feel like their eyes are actually like the same color as their skin, but like that's how I wanted to depict it. In these drawings, I wanted to make it a different color from the skin, but I feel like their eyes are usually... I'm not exactly sure. I have to look at a photo again. But for the top bunny, I did a yellow background because it kind of like links with the other chameleon. And then the other bunny, I did um, a green background to kind of match the green of the chameleons. And after doing the watercolor layer and then the, the line art, I also go in with some pencil crayon to add um, extra details. You can also lighten areas with pencil crayon. You can get like really light colors and go over top of darker watercolor and that can lighten it up without using paint. So I like to do that a lot. And then the sketches are pretty much done. I mean, you can call these sketches. I call them sketches because they're like a little looser, but they're like mi mini little drawings, I guess. The next animal is a numbat and I didn't know that these existed. I never heard of this animal before. I think like I might have, but I don't remember. So I was like, okay, what's that? I'm going to draw that. And I looked it up and they're these like cute little like rodent looking things. I watched a, a little bit of a video of them. I think they live in like grasslands and stuff and they're pretty small. They kind of look like squirrel bunnies. <laughs> I don't really know exactly like what their like family is, but of course I had to draw these guys. They're really cute. I like drawing things with like pointy noses. I think that's really fun. And when there's cool markings on the animal's eyes, that's always a lot of fun too. These ones had these like black streaks that kind of like went, like almost like a black stripe across the eye that follows 
the shape of the face and I really liked doing that. And it took me a bit to figure out exactly the kind of colors that I wanted to use. The first one I kind of did a dark purple across its entire back. But on the second one, I decided to just do the stripes with like a darker brownish purple. And I think that looks a little bit more true to what the animal actually looks like. And because I did like a dark purple on the entire back of the other one, I had to go in and lighten some areas because it has white stripes along the back, which is pretty cool. The next animal while I let those dry is a uh, Garanook or Garanook. I don't know. Uh, I think it might be pronounced different ways, but it's basically just like a giraffe deer. Like they have really long necks and they're really, really dainty and skinny. And I think they're really cute looking. Um, like very majestic, but also goofy looking because of how like tall they are. So I was really excited to draw these guys. I feel like I've seen them before, but I just never knew what they were called. There's a lot of like these types of animals that are kind of like deers or like antelopes, like, you know, the four legged ones that like run around in herds. This is just another one of those, I guess. And they're really cute. They, uh, I don't really remember what their coloring is, but I think they have like a lighter stomach and like darker ears. Um, darker legs maybe like I don't know how true to the to it I was staying to the photo um, then I added some like shadows and I wanted to draw a close-up of the face of it because I thought that would be fun just to see what its facial features would be like it's always nice to draw like a full body image of the animal and then like a close-up of the face because the faces have so much detail in them it's nice to try to capture that and I really like drawing animal heads. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it took me a while to get the hang of it and like each animal is slightly different in the face of course because they're all different but you kind of have to get used to like what each one entails. Like like I drew a bunch of bears recently. Their faces are like super fuzzy and their eyes appear very small compared to the size of their faces. So it's it's like a I, I kind of figured out the way to make them look cute is to like make their eyes really small and close together and their nose kind of takes up a really large portion of their faces. But this animal is a lot different because um, its eyes are really big compared to its head and its ears are huge. The bridge of its nose points outwards and it doesn't have like the fuzzy cheeks like bears do. But you know, it still has an eye, a nose and a mouth and ears. They're just like like different shapes and sizes and like I don't know every animal has a different shaped skull um so like the basics are the same like like the eyes can be similar shapes but the arrangement of features you kind of have to get used to from animal to animal um I think an animal I still struggle with a lot are cats I just like find them really hard to draw and I don't know why I think it's because their noses aren't like their noses don't stick out too far and their like chins I find kind of difficult to depict properly. But yeah, I had a lot of fun drawing a Garanook. I actually was just looking up some photos of them and I didn't realize that the males have horns. So I didn't even draw any with horns and that would have been a lot of fun. They're, they kind of remind me of like antelopes sort of. They're like skinny and, and curvy. Um, I'll definitely add some photos so you can see what I'm talking about. But it was nice drawing this like simple little deer-like animal and I like the way I laid down the watercolor and left like white areas. I left the stomach a little more white and made the ears dark and dark areas on the legs. Um, then I went back into the numbat and I added some more details on the tail with the brush pen. I feel like I have multiple ways that I do art in my sketchbook. And I guess today I decided to go for the like black outline sort of style, like the colored sketch outline style but some days I tend to do um, stuff that's a little more colorful and not rely on like black marker to do the heavy lifting of the outlines. Um, I, I consider this like an easier way of uh, doing art for me because you just need like one main outline color and then the rest have like watercolor textures and stuff underneath the outlines. Another style I like to do is like not rely on the black outline so much for that contrast and like definition and actually use pencil crayon and like dark pencil crayon and outline areas with it, switch colors, add a little shading and hatching. And I consider that more my like complete style, I guess, like when I'm not doing quicker art, when I'm doing something more involved, like a painting or like a more detailed sketch, I really like to use a colored pencil and um, use that as a line art 
sort of. So like I pick my darkest colors and if something's green, I'll pick my like really dark green and outline it with the dark green instead of using a black marker for everything. And I think that's a really good way. Well, that's a really nice process that I found for myself and how I like to make art. The next animal is a platypus and I think they're really cool. I watched a lot of uh, Phineas and Ferb growing up and um, I like to think I have a fondness for uh, platypuses <laughs> um, because I watched that show. I just think they're really cute. And at first I wasn't gonna draw one because I was looking at photos and I was like, this looks a little bit hard to draw. Like they're just kind of like shiny lumps. I don't know, there's not a lot of good photos of, of them on uh, Google and Pinterest and stuff. But I looked again and I was like, you know what? These are really cute and I should just give it a try. And I did. So while those are drawing, I'm doing a, a dodo bird. I don't know if you just call them dodos or dodo birds, but that's what I'm doing. I think they're really neat animals and I don't know if I've ever drawn one before. So I had to draw one and I started off by sketching with a purple pencil. And at this point I was really warmed up and having a lot of fun drawing I find as I fill the page and as I keep going it gets easier and uh, I just feel like I can draw faster and more accurately as I go so the dodo sketch was a lot of fun and it came to me very naturally um, I wish I drew more of them but I ran out of space on the page it was pretty much full at this point but I had a lot of fun drawing all these animals thank you to anyone who submitted suggestions for me if you submitted one of these and you didn't see your name in the video, it's because I just didn't see it because there might be duplicates for these animals. Like more than one person could have said chameleon and I just didn't see because there's a lot of responses. I think like 300 or something. So I can't really see all of them, but I did sift through and tried to find some animals that I have never drawn or that I don't remember drawing or that I like at least have not drawn in a very long time. I really hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun just like exploring animals I've never drawn. Um, it's it's really fun to go to Pinterest and go down like Pinterest rabbit holes and discover like all sorts of like weird cute little animals and try to draw them. But this time I based it off your suggestions and that was a lot of fun as well. But if you want to do this yourself, I would recommend using Pinterest and just like scrolling and trying to find some really like weird wacky animals you've never really drawn or seen before. Because I feel like every week I learn about animals that exist that I never knew existed before. And there's so many animals on this planet. Like it's, there's no way you know every single animal. Like there's always something new to discover. And that's what's really cool about art and drawing animals. And just like basing your art off of nature. Because there's so much out there that I probably have never heard of. And it's just fun to like learn as you draw and show people your art and show them like new animals that you've learned about. And maybe if you do something like this, you will find your new favorite animal. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was lots of fun to do. I'm almost done this sketchbook. Sketchbook two are coming very, very soon. And I'll see you at my next one. Bye.